What did you do in your teenage years that you would never tell your parents? Every time my parents ask me, what will you do there? I would sarcastically answer smoke weed. I told them the truth. The one time I wildly didn't want to go to PE class. I didn't have a good reason, and I knew my dad wouldn't just write me a note. So instead I took a white sheet of paper and lied beforehand that we are learning in English to recognize character traits by the signature of man. Asked my dad to sign it. Daddy went for it. Then I went to the printer, typed a standard hospital note on the computer, and typed it on the sheet with Dad's signature. I think I'm going to tell him sooner or later, because I'm even a little proud that I pulled it off. When I got my first smartphone, Nexus 5, my parents were a bit fucking crazy and started making me leave it off in the living room at night. Knowing them, it was probably a measure to keep me from watching porn. Unfortunately for them, my Nintendo 3DS also had a pretty good internet browser. It's my time to shine. One day in my senior year of high school, I had to sneak out of the house at 2 a.m. to get laid. The catch was that my paranoid parents had bells hanging on the front and back doors. Kind of in case of burglars, but there were none at the entrance to the laundry room that led to the garage, and the garage had a side door that led to the street. Obviously that was the only way out for me, but there was another problem with the side door. Sometimes it would slam shut, which meant that I could always get out through it. But getting in was a matter of luck. And since I was very stupid and wanted to fuck wildly, I figured it would work, so I went that way. Then I did my business, went back and realized the door was locked. Fuck. I went to pull all the other doors, all locked, but I had my cell phone with me. And then I had this crazy idea that might have worked. I dialed my mother, and turning on the most pitiful and helpless voice burst into the tube. Mommy, I woke up on our lawn for some reason, and all the doors are locked. I'm scared. Mom immediately jumped out into the street and led me home. Meanwhile, I mumbled something to her about lunacy. Here my mom realized I was really out of my mind and decided to make me waffles. It's been years since then, and mom still tells this story at all family gatherings. Our family thinks I'm a crazy lunatic. Who's too lazy to read? I got fucked. I lied to my mom. And then she made me waffles. Parents, remember on my seventh birthday you notice how weird I looked? I said it back then, because I was getting older. Actually, it was just that I was on acid and my pupils were huge. Haha, <laughs> no mom, dad, I'm fine. By the way, since when do we have paintings on the wall that move? The only time I ever came home stoned was once. I still wonder if my mother understood. What's interesting, that was the only time she ever made me do the dishes after midnight. How fucking careful I was. When I was 14, I once ran out of the church to throw up. I told my parents that I got food poisoning. But the truth is, I just had a horrible, horrible hangover. I went on dates with the girls, kissed girls. You know the usual joy of a 16-year-old, supposedly, Muslim girl. I'd rather die than tell my parents. At night I left the house, stole our SUV and drove 40 kilometers to lose my virginity. Dad thinks this story is fucking hilarious, but it's better for my mom not to know about it. For probably six months, I smelled paint every day after school. That explains a lot. One time I was looking for a tape to which I could have a good time alone, and happened to find a home video of my parents. The layout is that my sister is four years older than me, straight as an arrow in everything. Typical sister who has been happily snitching on her little brother all her life. The standard. At the time of the story is studying in another city. I am exactly her opposite. All the time getting into trouble, always acting fast and risky. So, I'm in 12th grade, for quite a long time working studying for decent grades. And then my parents decide that they can finally go on vacation and leave the house to me. Before they left, they hired John the housekeeper to help me around the house. John didn't care at all what I was doing, as long as I didn't burn the house down. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. I wake up, pour myself a glass of booze from Dad's, locked, stash, and turn on the porn. I'm only wearing underwear. It only takes 10 minutes and, surprise, my sister steps across the threshold. Luckily, I heard her car in time, so I had time to turn off the prawn and throw a blanket over my mostly naked and horny body. My sister obviously notices me wrapped in the blanket, hanging out in the living room with a red face. Hey! Hey, I didn't know you were coming home, erm, um, okay, I'm going to take a shower. It would seem that this should be the end of the story, but somehow it isn't. Next thing I know, she finds my glass of booze, or rather I managed to drink it, but she still smelled it without saying a word to me. She, in order to keep the smell, wrapped the glass in cling film, 
and wrote a note to my parents, saying that she suddenly decided to stop by and found a glass near my chair, and then took both glass and a note to parental bedroom. Two days fly by. I prepare for my parents' imminent return and give the whole house a once-over. While I do the cleaning, I happen to stumble upon a neatly hidden note in glass. I read the note and realized that it was there confusing not only me, but also John, the man who was helping around the house. It turns out that in addition to the glass, she found somewhere else in the house with condoms and lube. I read the note in full. There was no one nearby. Then I decide to replace the contents of the glass by removing the tape, rinse the glass with coke and wrapping it back in the tape. Then I go to John to show him the note. John, hmm, she's going a little overboard. My condoms, I always keep them in my sleepover kit just in case. So what's that supposed to mean? She went through my stuff? Me, yep. And the next thing was like a predictable but perfectly staged movie. The parents came home and John took them aside to talk about the note and the glass. The parents sniff the glass but feel nothing. Then they read the note and take my sister's words as paranoid delusion. Soon my sister was receiving a serious lecture on why you shouldn't touch other people's things and invade other people's personal space. And that's how I, a 17-year-old drunk who almost got caught jerking off in the living room, earned an apology from my parents. No one knows about it. I'm a grave. My mom let me bring my friends home after graduation and let them all stay at our place for the night. Believe it or not. But she had arranged beforehand with the other moms that we would have a little party with beer and some new drinks. When we got there, everyone gave their moms the keys to the cars. Then we turned on the music, set up a table, and sat down to play Dungeons and Dragons all night. And mom still thinks we were boozing. If you tell her the truth, it would break her heart. My mom still sometimes remembers one day when I was surprisingly cheerful and talkative. The truth is that I was wildly high on Ritalin. I took Ritalin once and provoked a mini breakdown in myself. Called my mom at 6 a.m. and told her about my depression, anxiety, and other problems I had from her and my dad. Not proud of what I did. I'm sorry, mom. I was watching porn on the family computer, not my brother. Brother also watched. Oh my god. I suspected that Asian porn wasn't my doing. My parents went out of town, but they left their car keys in the kitchen for some reason. I'm 16. I just learned how to drive. Suddenly, a girl writes to me and offers to pick her up. In 10 minutes, I take the keys from the table, get in the car, which I was not even allowed to touch, and without any driving license, I drive across town to her. My parents will never know about it. I snuck out of the house with my girlfriend to the boys. I spent the night at her place. She ended up hooking up with one of them right in his SUV. And the rest, me and two guys, were walking around in the desert at night, pretending not to notice the car swaying from side to side. I was about 14 at the time and I never did anything like that before after that. In fact, I only kept her company because I was afraid she might get into trouble with the boys on her own. I had to look after her. Then her parents found out we were out and threatened to tell my parents, and I was ready to be punished for the rest of my life. But her dad came to his senses and let it go, because he knew I was nice, but said we shouldn't run away like that anymore. As you can probably imagine, he had a lot of these pranks on his daughter. To my parents, I haven't said anything and I won't say anything. And I'm 28 now. I rub my carrot 15 times a day. You'll never tell them about it, but I assure you, they already know everything. I once photoshopped my shitty grade on a report card. My parents didn't notice anything. When my mom once demanded to show her how much money I had in my account and what I spent it on. I, with the help of a research the element in the Chrome, forged all the bank information. Somehow for that month, or even two, while I was cheating on the data, she has never once noticed a fake. How glad I am that my parents no longer spy on my finances, and that I am much more responsible with my money now than I was when I was a teenager. My parents know I smoke weed, but they don't know how much I smoke weed, and they will never know. I'm no longer proud of the act. One day I noticed my parents storing their booze behind the washer and dryer, and from that moment on, I started drink a shot or two from time to time from there. Then I chatted about it to a friend once, and he suggested we take one bottle with us to the beach. There we drank a lot more than we intended. And I was hooked on a wild panic, because I knew for a fact that my parents will see the shortfall. But here's the thing, there were no public toilets on that beach, and I really had to pee. So I hid in the dunes, peed into a fast food cup, and then carefully transferred the pee into my dad's rum. The bottle was already half empty. My drunken teenage mind told me that I was done with dad's rum, and I decided that I should put the bottle back where it belonged. 
To this day, I can only guess what the fate of this rum was. But I do know that every January, my parents would go to a party where they would bring their homemade rum tincture. Who's too lazy to read? I'm pretty sure my parents drank my pee. No, Mom, I'm definitely not buying it this time. Thanks so much for watching. In the comments below the video, write down what you did in your teenage years that you would never tell to your parents. And don't forget to watch our other episodes. That's it. Bye-bye.